What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. It's a Monday and that can mean only one thing. We're going to be checking out the world rankings to see what has shifted up due to a very exciting weekend of rugby that happened this weekend. And afterwards we'll be checking out the Super Brew results to see how all of you guys did in terms of your predictions. I again... Somehow, against all the odds, this might be the best predictor series I've ever done on the channel for myself. It's a shame it's happening in the World Cup warm-ups as opposed to the actual World Cup, but hey, I'll uh, I'll take it as a as a small win. So starting out then with the world rankings, we had some big games this weekend. I didn't do any review videos. Um, I was super busy this weekend. I did manage to catch all of the games, but I, I haven't had any time to sit down, make notes, and make review videos in case anyone was uh, was wondering. I know it's been a big uh, talking point this weekend. Ireland getting their win over England, uh, looking relatively comfortable in terms of the scoreline. Bit of a rusty team. It's the first time we've seen that, you know, full starting team play, uh, probably since like the Six Nations, right, to have that full fronted team back on. So, you know, it took them a little bit of a while to get into the swing of the game, but uh, by the end of it, that scoreline looking uh, very positive in their fashion. They'll be staying up there in that number one spot. New Zealand didn't play last week. South Africa, though. Oh boy, <laughs> South Africa uh, did exactly what I said right in the preview video. I said like, oh, I think the set piece area is going to be absolutely dominated by South Africa. They should be looking to run through basically every scrum, bunch of penalties. There should be a lot more points. This was never going to be a one score game. I did think it was going to be a bit closer, but uh, South Africa stormed that one and looked absolutely fantastic. Um, Wales just having to try and clinch anything they could from that game. At least the lineups got a bit better, right? That's about the only uh, positive I could take away. But with that big storming win, South Africa see themselves jump above France. France have gone from before the rugby championship started. France have gone from second in the world down to fourth. Uh, and South Africa now joining uh, New Zealand in that top three. Fantastic for them. And of course, South Africa are going on to play New Zealand this weekend, right? Or from Friday. It's even sooner. South Africa have actually already announced their, their team for that one, which is really exciting. Uh, and uh, doing some quick maths and calculations there, I do believe that if South Africa win that game, they actually move up to that number two spot. So a very exciting game to keep an eye on for this week. France getting that win over Fiji. Uh, not enough to uh, to save them, though, from dropping down into fourth. What a fun game that was. I really enjoyed seeing uh, Fiji get to have a really nice game. Further down the list then, uh, like I said, England uh, with that loss to uh, Ireland sees them holding in that sixth position. Fiji losing to France sees them stays ninth. Wales losing to South Africa actually didn't drop down that much. Luckily, they are still holding in the top 10. Uh, I wasn't quite sure at the end of the last week's video um, how it would affect. Georgia also got a, uh, a good win this week. So they've closed up that gap. Last week, the gap was about 2.6 um, and now we're down to basically two. So Georgia closing in. Luckily for Wales at this point, there is still a, a bit of a chunk there. But man, Pool D, it's looking really exciting. After seeing that game uh, by Fiji against France, not as settled as it could have been. It felt a little bit loose rather than, you know, strategic play. But the style of rugby they were bringing, the amount of offloads and finding ways uh, around some of that French defence, Wales have really got to uh, take a, a big look at that game and think, we need to we need to go full guns blazing for that one because I can see Fiji absolutely targeting that one. Italy getting their win over the USA sees them still holding in 13th. Really good scoreline for them. Um, a little bit unfortunate that Romania got a red card in that one. So it, it sort of ended up being a, a bit of a try fest for, uh, for Italy. But it was nice to see them open up a little bit. And there's USA holding there in, in 18th position. Let's have a quick a little run through just to check if there was uh, any other big movers. Uh, Paraguay jumped up from, um, from that 40th position up to uh, 37th seventh, leaving Tunisia and Sweden in the same place, and uh, the Philippines also managing to get a little bit of a leapfrog there from Colombia, dropping down. No other big changes um, in the rest of the world. There are not lots of changes to talk about across the uh, across the board, really, but the big talking point of the weekend, South Africa, with that very dominant performance over Wales, sees them move up into third in the world just a couple of weeks out from this World Cup kicking off, getting extremely exciting. So now we've got second in the world and fourth in the world in Pool A, and at first, third, and fifth in Pool B. So we still got those top five spread out across those two pools. But man, I am really looking forward to uh, that World Cup getting kicked off. On to the Super Brew then for round three of the World Cup warm-ups. Now, you might be able to see over on this side here, you might be able to see a whole bunch of green. That's because I actually did better this week. Now, I've done pretty consistently over the course of this uh, this predictor series at picking the teams that are going to win, but I've been missing out a lot on these match points and these bonus points. I keep going too low. I keep picking teams by three or four. This week, I went a bit more experimental, went trying to go a little bit wider 
later out in terms of the scoreboard. And it's uh, paid off a little bit more for me this week. So, starting out then with that Wales-South Africa game. South Africa taking that by 36. Monster game by them. Um, so many tries going over. So many players really stepping up. Kane and Moody. My God. That lad is uh, going from strength to strength. Really young lad, but really nice to see him performing so well. But Wales, though, oh man, what do we have to take away from Wales in that one? I mean, it wasn't the Wales full strength team, at least. I mean, that's a, you know one sort of positive. So you can say, you know, maybe they still got improvements that can be made. The line outs got a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, that wasn't a great deal for me to, to take away. And at least they didn't stop all the way up to that 80th minute. They kept going, but my God. South Africa absolutely dominant in that one. Um, I went, I think, a little bit low for this one. I said 13. Maybe I was being a little bit hopeful for that. I definitely thought it would be by two or three scores in this one. Um, where you wanted to be then, all the way down here. Nobody got, you know, super close to it. Big Brain got the closest, said South Africa by 26. Managing to get that one bonus point for getting within 10 of uh, of the correct score. So you still get the bonus point, which is a really big boost in that game because everyone else pretty much just taking one. Um, T. Davis and Lord Nicholas had some real faith in Wales for this one. I, I had no faith going into this game, uh, but they were holding strong. But had it gone Wales' way, there would have been some big point swinging your way and a lot of us uh, certainly would have missed out georgia versus the usa the only game of the weekend i didn't get to actually watch i watched all the uh, all the rest of them uh, but georgia taking this one 22 points to seven looking pretty dominant i said georgia by 16 they eventually won by 15 which means i take it someone got exactly 15 yes they did oh wow, a bunch of you four of you got exactly 15 so all of you splitting that bonus point unfortunately so even though you all got it absolutely bang on you've all split it for uh, 0.25 a lot of people getting very close so that is a lot of people to have uh, got that in terms of how close it was it's probably i don't know 40 percent of the entire group got it within that five points so a lot of points being shared there a couple of people went for the uh, for the usa fiofs went for a big call went for the draw my god can you imagine if that had pulled off you um some people went out a little bit higher big brain went out wide for this one again georgia by 45 thought they'd expect a, a really big game kept that one a little bit close in one of the weekend i didn't catch it you'll have to try and find some uh, some highlights from that one Ireland versus England. 29 points to 10. Ireland taking this one by 19. I said 14. Oh, I just about scraped in for the uh, the half bonus point there. In fact, yeah, I was the last one. A lot of people getting that uh, that half bonus point in this one. Big Brain again. Big Brain's going out wide. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. Big Brain's always going the furthest out from the rest of us. Uh, but Lewis Young getting in there with exactly 19. Superb call. Taking that bonus point away from everyone else. It was quite packed, actually. A lot of us went for uh, basically every number. Nobody picked six. 17 uh, was the only difference there, but uh, Lewis getting it correct there. Uh, having a little bit of a look down, a lot of people also went for, uh, for Ireland. Anyone go away from Ireland? Yes, three people went for England. They thought maybe a, a bit of an upset on the cards. Uh, Rugger, T. Davis and Andre all going for uh, England there. Again, big points. Had it gone their way? Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure why Bears Gamer has also got a uh, <laughs> a picture of like nothing. I don't know what's going on there, Bears. <laughs> That's I mean, uh, so I know, the photo. I don't know what's uh, specifically wrong with uh, with yours compared to everyone else's. Uh, Italy versus Romania. This one, very exciting game. I actually sat down afterwards and thought I watched this game, watched Italy smash this one out. Romania got a red card, so it went really, really, you know, towards Italy's side. Um, I realised afterwards. I think this is the first game I've ever seen. By Romania. I don't think I've ever actually watched a, a Romania game, which was fun to see. A lot of uh, very big units. I didn't realise Romanian people were quite so big. Their players were massive, um, but just a little bit disorganised. The defensive line, not great. They were really trying to play wide, even while a man down. I think there's a couple of things just to get right at sort of a base level for Romania because some of their players look really dominant. A couple of their centers, really big lads, you know, absolutely smashing in the tackles, but didn't really look like they had the best sort of plan for this game. They just sort of went in and, uh, and saw what happened. So where you wanted to be for this one, though, uh, out near the top, I thought I had a great call here. I went for Italy by 45. I thought huge scores. Uh, yet again, though, who else is out there? But Big Brain, also out there on uh, 53. But Foot Yeezy coming in well on the 49. What was it actually? It was 50 so pretty bang on only one point away takes that uh, bonus point away from us the three of us the only ones to get that half bonus point i assume most people have gone for italy everyone went for italy everyone expected italy to take that one as you'd imagine you know they're involved in the six nations so often um they do have a really solid team it just feels really weird when you get to see the difference between italy playing the six nations they have such a tough time and then you watch them play a team like romania and you get to see actually what Italy do bring to a game when you compare them to a team that's a little bit sort of outmatched by them. Italy can step up to do some big games, but they've still got some things they want to work on as well. A lot of handling errors for them in that game. They'll just want to try and fix those before they get to the World Cup, because where is the leniency with Romania? 
is there. Um, France and New Zealand will not give you leniency. Handling for me will probably be uh, one of their bigger fixes by the time we get round to that World Cup. And then the final game of the weekend, France versus Fiji. This one was quite a hard one to call. I really, you know, this could have been 60 points to France or maybe even a Fiji win. It could have been anything in between. Uh, I eventually went for France by 12. I sort of went two scores-ish. France won by 17. Yet again, I just about scrape uh, me, Gladiator, and Pierre all just about scraping that uh, that half bonus point. Uh, a lot of people got it pretty much in line. Once again, though, a couple of people getting this one bang on. Four people, Fioff, Stebag, Top Notch Ruby, and Bowie all getting this one bang on with 17. Uh, but because so many of you got it, you all had to split that bonus point, which means you don't really get to make the, uh, the most of it, but some fantastic picks. Oh, and then just quickly, I actually realized a couple of people went for Fiji. You thought big upset time. Ian and T Davis thought maybe... Fiji could have brought something. They've certainly got a, uh, an exciting team, uh, but France just uh, being able to sort of outmuscle them and be playing a little bit uh, sharper than Fiji in that game. But I'm really looking forward to see Fiji in the World Cup. I think they've got real, real potential to cause some big upsets. Take a look at the round then. Lewis Young coming in there, taking this one five from five. Quite a few of us actually got five from five this week. Didn't realize we don't get the Grand Slam bonus points. Is that a... Six Nations only thing? I'm sure we've done the Summer Internationals and the Autumn Internationals before, and they had the Grand Slam bonus points, just for getting all the, the calls correct. Apparently, they don't have that for this one, which is why we haven't seen anyone have it yet, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but getting five from five with that uh, one and a half match bonus and the 1.25 bonus overall, taking you out to 7.75. A right great round from you. Me and Big Brain both getting our uh, five from five. Uh, Big Brain got the bonus point, whereas I got two match points. Apparently, that makes me slightly higher or maybe it was the tdm difference for us uh, we both ended on seven bowie getting in close on a 6.75 gladiator and foot easy on 6.5 top notch rugby christy lad is irish and uh, all blacks are all there on 6.25 some really close scores this week a lot of people getting pretty well i love a little bit of a scroll down so that uh, of course everyone can see their names a lot of five out of fives actually when you have a look at just how many people got five out of fives those half bonus points for you know getting it within five and the bonus points really make up a, a big difference in this one uh lord nicholas was the first one of people to uh you know get four from five which is still great you know we would really be hoping for some big scores in there uh but so many people got five out of five uh and then unfortunately as we move slightly further down as well uh yeah you know three out of five two out of five Aza got one of one not sure what i'll know Aza, <laughs> you fancied only uh, picking one game for this one um and then alfie brez and nigel uh, not getting any of their picks in this week so congratulations to lewis for taking this round and taking a look at the leaderboard as it stands your boy, your boy, Matt Dragons winning one. I've never, ever been in this position before. Um, the predictor's normally my worst one. I'm much better at the actual fantasy one that we normally do. Uh, but I'm currently out there on 18 win points, 3.5 match bonus points, most of them coming from this round. And uh, that one bonus point has me on 22.5. Bowie, though, climbing up one place, goes from uh, third up to second place. Only 15 win points. Okay, so three games called wrong more than me, but... Match bonus point four, bonus point overall, 3.08. That is how you get involved in these predictors. Sometimes you don't even need to get them all right. As long as you get close enough or you get the close bonus points on the ones you do get right, puts you right up there. So puts Bowie on 22.08. So my God, I mean, that is, that is getting a match bonus point correct more than me next week. Sees you being able to take this one. WRU14, who's been leading the charge throughout this entire World Cup warm-ups, um, dropping down two places now on 21 point five this round not going the way for you villa farrell christy ladders irish and oscar all holding in their positions through to sixth big brain going in with some more big picks this week uh climbs up three to seventh place on 20.5 so only two points down it's not a lot. We've got a lot of games going on this weekend. There is absolutely the opportunity to uh, to overtake me by the end of this round if I uh, don't get some good picks in. Foot Easy climbing up three on 19.83. Schmitting staying in ninth. Gobi up two. Gladiator up three. D-Bag up one. A lot of you guys climbing up this week. Pedri having a bad round this one. Unfortunately for you, Pedri dropping down six places, helping a lot of other people move up the table. Top Notch Rugby goes up four. Big Brain Kean goes up two. My boyfriend made me do this. Stays in 16th. David Wakefield 
climbs four up to 17th. Joey Barton up two. Dojoba up four. Pierre up ninth. I'm seeing a lot of people move up, which means I've got a horrible feeling a lot of people are about to have really big losses as we go further down. Scottish Squid uh, goes up six. Fios climbs three. All Blacks Forever climbing nine. Lord Nicholas up four. And there in 40s, the big drop I was waiting for. I didn't know who it was going to be. Aza Matt, unfortunately for you, Aza, you're always down in the in the comment section. A, a bit of a poor round for you. I'm not sure what went on. You only had that one pick. Maybe you didn't have time to uh, to fill them all in. Unfortunately, uh, dropping your way down there. Bears Gamer climbs up three with some better picks this week. Rugger down one. Ian down nine. Oh, man, there's Ian. who's uh, I'm sure won one of the championships, right, Ian? I think it was the maybe a Six Nations you won once. Um, certainly some uh, some big contenders down here in the uh, in the lower end. Andre down five. Lewis Young, who of course won this round, and I think did really well last week as well. Um, only on 14.5. So I'm going to guess either Lewis joined the, the group slightly late um, or didn't get any picks in that first week. But I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of glad he didn't because Lewis is smashing it. Um, you know, he's missed about, if he's missed one round of games, which is averaging about seven or eight points, put you in the lead. <laughs> Word of warning for when we get to the World Cup one. Get yourselves signed up nice and early because it gives you uh, every chance to win then. T. Davis down 16, Nigel down 10, I'm new here, climbs 1, and Alfie Brez dropping down 3, unfortunately for you, Alfie, uh, down into that 34th place. So, congratulations to Lewis on taking the round. Congratulations to me, as arrogant as that sounds, for, uh, for taking over the round. Uh, we have one round left of the World Cup warm-ups. And they are some very exciting games. And there's also a lot of games. I'm really annoyed. I would love it to be one game this week so I could just call it right and be done with it. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. There's a lot of big games going on. New Zealand versus South Africa, that first game going on, that's actually happening on Friday. So, you know, keep your eyes out because you need to lock in all your predictions by 7.30 on Friday, which is probably going to be really tough because I imagine France, Australia down here won't even announce their teams till late Thursday, maybe even on Friday. So going to be really hard to get all your picks in. I do actually want to double check that because I just thought when we had the Tonga Canada match or something, wasn't it on like a Tuesday, people had still been able to put their picks in for that game. So I'm not actually 100% sure if it has to be by that first game or just the kickoff of each game where you need to have your picks selected. For safety though, I would say make sure you have all your picks done by uh, 7.30 on Friday just to uh, make sure they're all locked in. So New Zealand, South Africa to start us off. That's going to be a tough old game to pick. I haven't seen New Zealand play for a couple of weeks now. South Africa looking strong, but playing at home in New Zealand, which they won in the Rugby Championship. Tough call. England versus Fiji. England fighting on the ropes a little bit at the minute versus a Fiji side that, you know, okay, yeah, they lost to France, but they had a lot of positives to take away from that game. That one... Might be a lot closer than a couple of people think just looking at them on uh, as names on a piece of paper. Italy going up against Japan. Uh, we all know what Japan can suddenly do when they uh, turn up to a game. We've seen that at World Cups before. Scotland versus Georgia. I'm more inclined to say Scotland will feel comfortable about that one. But then Georgia beat Wales. You know, last year they've had some fantastic games. They're getting big wins. They've gone two from two in these warm-up games compared to Scotland getting one. Maybe Scotland uh, are in a little bit of trouble for that Georgia one as well. And then finally, Spain versus Argentina. Spain are one of the teams I don't really know a lot about just personally. Um, Argentina, of course, got that loss. And of course, only had that, that one win in the um, in the rugby championship. But you'd have to say the the opponents they've gone up against so far have certainly been bigger teams than, uh, than Spain. But it is at home in Spain. You never know what uh, Spain might bring. Oh my God, and there's more. There's more going on. We've also got Ireland versus Samoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many games going on. Um, Ireland versus Samoa. Samoa are also having that win. They beat Tonga. Uh, but you'd have to say the Ireland team's looking probably a little bit stronger for me at the minute. And then finally, France versus Australia. This is the teams that I said, I've got a feeling that maybe this could end up being a World Cup final. I did that in the whole breakdown video for, for Australia. That was before Australia started losing <laughs> basically every single game. So maybe that won't be the case, uh, but this will be a really fun game to see where both teams are at. But that one is on Sunday as well, so we actually have some uh, some rugby on Sunday. But thank you to everyone who has joined in with that Super Room. Make sure you are getting your picks in for next week. Nice and early, like I said, that game's on on Friday. We'll have the preview videos coming out this week. Uh, I don't even know how many games I'm going to be able to cover. I'll try my best to sort of, you know, cover as many games as I can in the previews. It's the final games of the World Cup warm-ups this weekend. That means after this, there's a break, and then we are on to the World Cup. The World Cup predictor 
is currently already live. There's a video out on the channel about how you can join the World Cup predictor if you haven't already and you enjoy doing this on Superbrew. I found out yesterday the fantasy is also now live. I haven't set one up. I will be doing it over the next day or two um, and I'll make a separate video about all the codes and stuff you need for the World Cup and uh, take a little bit more in depth about it. So keep an eye out for when that video goes live. Just that you are signed up nice and early to that one because let me tell you, I've done one for the World Cup before before I even had this channel and uh, man it is chaos it is chaos to keep track of so many teams but it is an awful lot of fun thank you to everyone who has joined in thank you to you all for watching this video today I'll see you all next time guys bye bye <laughs>